This is the voice of Awarely, and this lecture for you all now is going to cover footprint and some insight into how we can use it to hunt for opportunity within our market. Footprint is one of my favorite tools to use. It is extremely versatile and great for building a more granular understanding of a price or rotation, as well as offering specific opportunities to actually execute on your momentum and reversion trading ideas. Before we start, make sure to like and subscribe. Also follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord, the link to which will be in the description below this video. A brief overview of the lecture is as follows. We will begin, as always, with some general remarks and disclaimers. Afterwards, I will take a bit of time to talk about some of the pros and cons of the footprint to help you decide if it's something that you may benefit from. Understanding the footprint will also require us to have a very basic understanding of microstructure, so we will cover that here. Following that, we will give an overview of the footprint, its anatomy, and explore some of the mechanics of setting up and customizing our footprint type. The final part of this lecture will be based around some very basic but powerful footprint trading strategies that I use every day. General remarks. Firstly, I'm not a financial advisor and this video is for entertainment purposes only. Otherwise, I want to make it clear that footprint is just a tool that is best used as a piece of confluence, not as a singular reference point. There is no one size fits all trading system and the footprint does not fill that void. You do not have to and should not trade every setup that stems from the framework I'm going to provide the best trades are done by executing discretionarily based on an understanding of context and in having an established a probability skewing system. Trading is an art as much as it is a science. In that, I want to emphasize that in this business, we work with probabilities. There are no guarantees and anyone telling you otherwise is lying to you. When contemplating the process of adding a tool to your system, it's important to understand its pros and cons. As per the footprint chart, it is generally more effective when evaluated as a filter for traditional indicators and price action. It achieves this by the nature of providing its users with a front row seat of intracandle activity. This dynamic also provides footprint unique trading opportunities to gauge real time market emotions and give more confidence and context behind entry traders. My favorite thing about the footprint and closely related tools are its ability to offer what I call a wait now relationship with trading decisions. That to say they can help immensely with dialing in the timing of an entry. The cons of the footprint chart come to those who generally prefer a higher time frame for trading. Most of the edge from footprint charts are reserved for low time frames. That said, as with pretty much everything low time frame, this generally means that you are confronted with a great deal of noise. Lastly, the footprint can be detrimented by fragmented markets. I would not recommend using it in Forex, for example, where most of the activity is conducted via over-the-counter spot trading. It is also worth being cautious when using the footprint for trading commodity futures, as activity is divided between monthly contracts, so you are missing a lot of information. That said, I still personally use the footprint for trading crude oil. In my opinion, however, the best markets for using footprint are equities futures, which have the vast majority of activity taking place in the front month contract, bonds, and crypto, where even though activity is divided between exchanges, the behavior is mostly consistent with markets that have centralized activity, as long as you're utilizing major exchanges. At the time of this video, that would be Binance and Bybit. Before we talk about the footprint itself, understanding the footprint requires us to have a basic knowledge of microstructure. I do intend on having a more comprehensive video on this topic, but for now, suffice to say that there are two main types of orders that everyone should be familiar with, and all other advanced orders types are based on these. Those two types are limit orders, which act as passive or resting liquidity within the market, and market orders, which are aggressive orders that take passive liquidity in the market. To visualize this, we can look to the left at this depth of market, or DOM for short. On the left, in the blue column, we can see our limit bids, which are resting buy orders in the market. And on the right, in the red column, we can see our limit asks, or limit offers, which are resting sell orders in the market. In the middle left, we can see, in the middle left, we can see red numbers reflecting market sells. When a market sell comes into the market, it will hit at the best bid. You can see the best bid on a DOM by looking at the highest price that has X number of bids in the corresponding box of the bid column. This dynamic is similar in the case of buy orders, lifting the market through limit asks. And this data is also what is fundamentally being recorded by our footprint charts. The bid ask spread is the difference between the bid and ask. The example that we see on this DOM visual, the best bid is 63.195 because that's the highest price the buyers have resting orders at, and the best ask is 63.2 because that's the lowest price that sellers have resting orders at. So in an example tying everything together, with our current bid ask spread of 63.195 and 63.2, for buyers to get control of 63.2, they would need to order 49 contracts in market and then to avoid price going back to 63.195 when sellers hit, they would need to post limit bids at 63.2, the price that they just cleared out. If they can do this, the new spread would be 63.2 for the bid, 
and 63.205 for the ask. So actually looking at a footprint chart candle, we can compare it to traditional candles by virtue of that traditional candlesticks allow us to see the open, the high, the low, and the close, as well as the candle's price range. With a footprint chart, we see all of that, as well as the activity at each level of the candle's price range, and all of the dynamics that come with that, including the shading of each level reflecting the significance of activity, the shape that shading produces, and the POC for activity within the candle. There are a lot of ways to customize a footprint chart. The different types of which we'll discuss in this lecture are the bid ask, the delta, the volume, and the trades footprint. Each of these can be configured in accordance with different periodicities. Of course, we have our traditional time-based candles. Here, I wouldn't really recommend anything beyond an hourly, as at that point, the footprint really starts to lose its edge. You can also use volatility-based candles. Some examples of that are the tick, the range, the reversal, and the Rango charts. I won't talk about all of these, but I will say that the tick chart works quite well in conjunction with the footprint. You do, of course, have to configure this discretionarily based on the market you're trading and its volatility. Lastly, we can use footprints with volume-based candles that close a candle with a certain amount of volume and delta hit it. We'll talk about what delta is momentarily. The first footprint I want to talk about is the bid-ask footprint, which reflects the number of market orders that hit at each the bid and ask at each level of a candle's price range. From our DOM slide, you'll remember that the limit bids were on the left and the limit buyers were on the right. In a footprint, you see market sells on the left and market buys on the right, just as in our DOM example. This is a function of sellers hitting the bid and buyers lifting the offer. The bid-ask footprint is the most popular type of footprint chart. It offers the most information at the cost of creating the most noise, but also offers bid-ask unique footprint setups. Later in the lecture, we'll discuss the shading behind each of these numbers, but for now, all of these will be set to full row shading for ease of understanding. Our next footprint type is the delta footprint. Delta is the difference between the volume of market buys and market sells at each level of a candle's price range. For ease of understanding, we calculate delta by subtracting the number of asks to hit a market from the number of bids that lift the market at a certain price point of a candle. You can see on the left side we have prices in this candle where sellers hit at a greater number of contracts than buyers, and on the right side we can see the prices wherein buyers traded a greater number of contracts than the sellers. This type, in my opinion, is a great tool for a learning footprint as it condenses the amount of information received from a bid-ask footprint. Here we can see an example of how delta is calculated. On the left we have a screenshot from our bid-ask footprint example, and on the right, we have that exact same candle as a function of the delta footprint. Taking this 316 area from our bid ask, if we follow our formula to calculate delta, we would do 308 bid minus 316 ask to get negative 8 delta at this price level of this candle's footprint. Again, you can see this easily by using the top price as an example, where 0 asks hit the market and 87 bids lift for a positive delta of 87. Opposite of the delta is our volume footprint, which is the cumulative number of market buys and market sells at each level of a candle's price range. In other words, we are adding the number of market bids to the number of market asks at a specific level of a candle's price range to determine the volume conducted at that level. I find this is a great tool to use as a secondary footprint. I'll show what that looks like in a bit. I do want to add that early on I said the footprint chart retains most of its edge on low time frames, but using a volume footprint is a viable high time frame application of this tool. Here we can see an example of how our volume footprint is established. On the left we have a screenshot from our bid ask footprint example, and on the right we have that exact same candle as a function of volume. Taking this 316, 308 area from our bid ask, if we follow our formula to calculate volume, we would do 308 bid plus 316 ask to get 624 volume at this price level on this candle's footprint. The last footprint chart type we'll discuss is the trades footprint. True to its name, it reflects the total number of finalized trades at each level of a candle's price range. I wouldn't say this is the most valuable primary footprint, but I can see it being an interesting choice of a secondary profile, although I've never personally used it. My personal preference for footprint configuration is to have a bid-ask footprint with a delta profile in the background. This allows me to easily spot one-sided participation whilst still having the opportunity to assess more granularly for reasons we'll get into momentarily. I sometimes also run a secondary volume footprint as I like to see it a running confluence with the delta profile to validate its context and for an easy eye test of activity within a candle. Contrary to our example slides, where each of the price levels were fully shaded, since I run a profile configuration, you can see that the shading on these nodes only goes to a certain extent as opposed to the full price level. This gives us another avenue to assess the relative significance of activity at a certain node, and also creates different shapes, which we'll talk about in a bit. 
Taking a brief tour from the footprint chart itself, the footprint statistics indicator is a great tool to use in conjunction with the footprint and offers various filters that operate off of footprint related data. Before we get into the specifics of using the footprint chart to trade, it's important to establish some context. So to reiterate, footprint charts help traders see how much and where aggressive market activity is taking place inside of a candle's price range. Again, by aggressive, we just mean market orders. Some things we can consider based on this dynamic are the shading of a footprint chart and how the activity is distributed in a candle, which also lends to the profile shape, the speed and size at which orders are coming into the market, and general auction dynamics. Reiterating again before we move on, the footprint charts are not a standalone strategy. They are a tool best used in confluence with a broader context and an understanding of the market you're using it in. There are a lot of ways to trade with and interpret the footprint, but we'll go over the following examples in this video. Finished auctions, imbalance, absorption, one bar divergences, activity voids, and key auction reversals. But again, there are plenty more, and most important to mention is that not every piece of data you see coming in via the footprint has to be part of a strategy or entry trigger. Order flow is largely the process of listening to the market tell you a story, and footprint is just one tool that we use to listen. That said, the first strategy that we'll look at is absorption. Absorption is the act of passive orders taking hits from a one-sided regime of aggressive orders with little to no change in price. For the more seasoned traders, I will note that a more nuanced understanding of absorption would be to suggest that it is the result of an unrewarding change in price based on that dynamic. Absorption is most effective in pullback areas during generally strong momentum or at key levels of potential reversal. Here on the right, we can see two examples of absorption in an application of shading and profile shape where here we see the delta profile to the left of a volume profile, both that have P shapes given their topside distribution. This is a reflection of a large amount of buying coming in near the high of the scandal. We know it is lopsided in favor of buyers because the delta profile is blue, signifying positive delta, as opposed to red, which signifies negative delta. From here, the expectation is that all this buying isn't generating any results, so prices would be expected to shift in favor of sellers. We can see here that this pullback leg is ended when buyers begin to absorb sellers at the base of this candle and price continues its uptrend from there. Before moving on, it's important to note a few things here. Absorption is not footprint unique. Absorption does not have to only happen in one candle. And just because we can't see a P or B shape profile on our current time frame doesn't mean it's not absorption. This next strategy is a finished auction and requires us to zoom in on our bid-ask footprint. Finished auctions are a phenomenon where no passive limit orders chase when aggressive market orders clear out a level. In the highs, we can see this as the footprint having a reading of zero on the left and the next number of market buys on the right side. At the lows, we would see X number of market sells on the left and zero market buyers on the right side. This phenomenon is typically an indicator of reversal as buyers are unwilling to defend higher prices at the limit in highs and sellers are unwilling to defend lower prices at the limit in lows. This is much more viable in thicker markets where it is expected that passive orders will quickly chase aggressive orders after clearing out a level to keep the spread tight. Footprint imbalances will also use a bid-ask footprint. They are a definable amount of disproportional one-sided participation and are calculated horizontally based on a one-tick spread. In this top right visual, we can see how it is evaluated on an imbalance of 400%. Many candles at many price points have imbalances, but the best way to apply this principle is when the imbalances are stacked, meaning that there are a series of consecutive imbalances in a candle's price range. We can see that here and here. This can be applied to a context of potential continuation as stacked imbalances are located in the body of a candle with market orders stepping in at worse prices. It can also be applied to a context of potential reversion if the imbalances are stacked at the extreme of a candle. In this case, you will often find imbalances as a result of a string of unfinished auctions. You can interpret this with just finished auctions alone, but especially when combining stacked imbalances with a series of finished auctions, it is a strong indicator of stops having been hit. Again, for accurate reading, I also recommend only really using this principle in thicker markets. One bar divergences are a dynamic between a candle and its delta, wherein the candle prints with an opposite bias of its delta. The case of a bearish divergence, we would see an up candle that comes on negative delta, and in the case of bullish divergence, we would see a low on price that comes with positive delta. This is something that happens quite often, but I find it works best during pullbacks of trends, as we can see here in this visual. Activity voids are areas in the delta or volume profile with a relatively high number of low notes clustered. Price often trades back to these areas and they are best evaluated in thicker markets where we expect levels to be traded more thoroughly. 
On the right, you can see a few examples of this. It is generally more apparent of a principle with larger candles. Here you can see an impulse up that is retested before continuing up and trading through this thin area. There is another example here where price tests the void before continuing lower. Key auction reversals are moments where a price creates an impulse candle with high relative volume and delta, followed by a candle in the opposing direction with small delta and large volume. As the name implies, these setups offer great reversion opportunities. You can see here a strong push down, followed by an up candle on relatively high volume. You can see it shaded a bit darker gray than the other boxes here and has a small delta bar. On the right side of this visual, you can see a relatively large buying candle on relatively high volume and delta, followed by a sell candle that doesn't have the greatest amount of volume, but we can see here the small amount of relative delta. To execute on these trading ideas and learn to use the footprint as part of your own system, there are four main platforms I would recommend. The first two, Sierra Charts and Exo Charts, are the most popular but are paid for both legacy markets and crypto. Sierra is a great but quite complicated platform and I would really only recommend it to those more seasoned order flow traders and people who have a knack for working their way around the nuances of different platforms. Alternatively, you can use Quantower, which is free for crypto but has price plans for other features. Atos is also free for crypto and is the platform used in all of the example screenshots that we went over. It is a fairly easy platform to operate, and I'll be putting out a dedicated video for people who want to learn its basic functionality. If you want to use it for legacy markets, you can pay for the ability to connect your broker. I personally love the footprint chart on this platform because you can seamlessly scroll between normal candlesticks and a footprint. I highly recommend this for beginners. Again, it is free for crypto, but if you're interested in using the footprint for legacy markets like indices and bonds, then there will be an affiliate discount link in the description for Atas for you to use. Before we close out the lecture, I want to mention, as I always do, that the best way to increase the expected value of a trading setup is confluence. Don't get carried away, but find things that make sense for your system. A few things that I look at that help me are key levels, the depth of market, oscillator divergences, specifically the cumulative delta, trend identification, trap traders, but realistically, anything you can think of, there's edge everywhere as long as it makes sense for your system. That's the end of the lecture. If you enjoyed it, like and subscribe as well as follow me on Twitter. My handle is on screen and there will be a link in the description. There will also be affiliate links for Atos and Apex Funded in the description. As I said, the footprint charts are very effective in bonds and equities futures. And with Apex Funded, you can trade legacy markets with someone else's money. Right now, you can use my code for a 71% discount on evaluations. If you found value from this, you can also support my credit eating addiction using that Ethereum address on screen and in the description. Lastly, I have a free trading Discord open to everyone. I'm in there all the time giving feedback and answering questions. You can also get the framework cheat sheet from the VWAP video in there as well. That's it for the video. Thanks for watching. See you all in the books.